COVID-19. But who's most likely to get COVID-19 from me? So what is coronavirus? Coronavirus is a very large group of different viruses. There are lots and lots of them. Um, and humans have coronaviruses, animals have coronaviruses. So it's pretty common. And actually, the common cold is also a coronavirus. So we have all, every single one of you, have been had coronavirus multiple times throughout your lifetime, and you have survived. So, but what makes this one so unique? Why does this create so much concern? Because any time, so there's a lot of different animals that have coronaviruses. The coronavirus that this one came from China, uh, was first diagnosed in December of 2019, and we think that it um, came from an animal. So a lot of times, and we're going to be seeing more and more of this, is as we live very closely to our animals, as we encroach more on, our, on animals, and we eat animals and all sorts of stuff, is that transmission of viruses go from one animal to a human. Okay, and this is what happened. We call this zoonosis, human, uh, animal to human spread. Okay, and we think that this most likely came from a bat, probably didn't go directly from a bat to a human, but may have gone bat to another animal to a human, um, and then spread, and we think this is within a um, wet market in China where there were a lot of uh, sea animals, but also live animals as well, and then there was an outbreak that started there. And so whenever a humans get ex exposed to a new virus that they have never seen before, because this was a bat virus, then none of us have immuni immunity to it. And when we don't have immunity to it, we're very vulnerable to infection. And then on top of that, it can be quite severe because, again, our body can't fight it off. We know that actually MERS and SARS had much higher rates of death. Somewhere between 10 to 30 percent of people with MERS and um, SARS died. So when they saw this new vi virus, it's like, oh my gosh, everyone's going to die. Okay, that's not how it's working out. But that's always the concern when you get a new virus. So this is a, a relatively recent map of coronavirus worldwide. And you can see that it has spread to basically every single continent except for Antarctica. The other one on the side, you cannot see it very well, but it basically shows you the number of cases. And the majority of cases came out of China. Um, so 80,000, and there are, next after China is um, Korea, South Korea is number two, number three is um, Iran, Italy, so those are the top four, China, Korea, Iran, Italy, and then the cruise ship, the Diamond Princess off the coast of Japan, France, Germany, Japan, and then the United States is kind of near, you know, lower. This is not the whole map, I mean, a whole list, I just cropped portion of it. And the U.S. has over, over 200 cases, but we also have the highest rates of death. Um, and that actually has to do with this outbreak that's occurring in Washington st State at a nursing home. Okay? So, okay, so overall, there's over 101,000 cases worldwide and 3,466 deaths. That was as of two hours ago. Probably changed by now. So who gives you COVID-19? First of all, you only get COVID-19 from a person who has COVID-19 obvious, <laughs> right? Just because that person is coughing, if they don't have COVID-19, they cannot give you COVID-19. Okay, so, so if you have COVID-19, let's say I have COVID-19, who is most likely to get COVID-19 from me? My husband, <laughs> number one. The people in your household, okay? Those are the people who are most likely to get COVID-19 and the people I spend a lot of time with closely. Now, if I'm symptomatic, if I'm coughing, then the people who are close enough to me to get coughed on, okay? And so coughing normally, so if I'm talking right here, so Pastor Kevin is a little bit beyond my range of normal droplets. So droplets normally from breathing and talking travel up to about six feet. Okay, so that six feet is two arms length, okay? About, I'm shorter. But anyway, you understand what I'm saying. Two arms length, that's the common distance. So if you want to have a normal person and you want to have social distancing, we talk about six feet. And that's going to be safe for most people who are talking to you. Cough, and then, so those are the, so, and then close, Household members, people in close proximity, normally even within one uh, meter or three feet, but up to six feet for prolonged periods of time. So if you only sat next to them for 30 seconds, 
probably not so much, okay? So we're talking about 30 minutes, one hour, longer. You're having a deep conversation and they're coughing all over you. That's the kind of person. You're having a two-hour Bible study and they coughed all over you. Okay, and in areas of high rates of COVID, again, so do you worry about the environment? In other words, this, this podium here, a lot of people spoke at this podium. What's my risk of getting COVID if one of our members from the podium coughed on this? It's pretty low still, okay? But if you have high rates of spread, then these surfaces become you know, contaminated and we can pick it up. But still the most common way is close contact. And then if no one near you has COVID, you cannot get COVID. Did I repeat that? So you don't need to freak out if there's no one here with COVID. You are totally safe. Got it? Okay. So let's say what happens when you get exposed to a person with COVID. So the COVID goes to the respiratory tract. It's a respiratory virus. And so there are very few people, some people actually have no symptoms at all. They're called asymptomatic, okay? But then the most common symptom are actually fever in almost 90% of the time. And then next beyond that is cough, about 70%. And then shortness of breath, about 20. Fatigue, about 40% rarely causes diarrhea. So that's the vast majority of people. And then some people get really sick, and those people who get really sick develop severe pneumonia. Then their respiratory failure, um, their respiratory system fails, and then they can go to kidney failure and death. Okay, that's, that's how it happens for people who die. They develop a severe pneumonia that gets worse and worse, and then they die. So how is it spread? Let me tell you, coronavirus gets in through three places. Your eyes, your nose, in your mouth, okay? Not by your clothes. Doesn't get on your, it, your skin. It doesn't go through your skin. It's not like Ebola. Ebola actually you get sweat and you know, that's it. But this one is, so you, so if somebody coughs in you and you breathe it in, someone coughs in you and you sniff it in, or the most likely is you rub it in. What do I mean by rub it in? Guess what is the number one way that, do you know how many times you touch your face in an hour? 25 times an hour. 25 times an hour. So what does that mean is I touch this podium, right? And if you look at me, you can watch me really carefully and go, how many times is you gonna to touch your face? So I touch this, right? Let's say it's contaminated, but I don't touch my face for the rest of this talk. Am I gonna get infected from the space? No, right? Because I didn't put it into my mouth. But if I touch this and I rub my eye, I pick my nose, and I lick my thumb. If they were on here, I have a good chance of picking it up. You understand that? So the number one way of protecting yourself is, what do you think it's gonna be? Wash your hands, wash your hands. And then the other thing is, how do you prevent other people from getting infected? So I told you the uh, social space of six feet, right? When you sneeze, your sneeze travels up to 200 feet. But most of it actually travels about up to 25 feet, okay? 25 feet, so where you go, where's 25 feet from here? From here to Joe Park maybe, okay? That's how far a sneeze traveled. So not only before like Pastor Ron was, I mean Kevin was right too far for me to breathe on, but if I sneezed, the first one, two, three, four rows could now get my sneeze. That's a lot, right? So what should you do if you're gonna sneeze? Cover. How should you cover if you're gonna sneeze? And you guys are I'm demonstrating, and let's everyone practice. Why not your hand? What, what did I tell you about your hands? They touch many things, they're just like the worst. I mean, I already just touched my water here, right? So you can imagine, I touch this, I touch my water bottle and I'm gonna drink it. What did I just do? And then I. I just contaminated myself. So I'm being very mindful of that. So you don't want to cough into your hand because your hand is contaminated. Now, every, and then I sneezed here and then I shook Pastor Kevin's hand. <laughs> I mean, we do that. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Hug, rub their face. Okay, don't do that. So remember, sneeze into your elbow, okay, like this, and then kind of turn your way, face away, that way it kind of absorbs, okay? If you can get, if you have a, um, you know, tissue ready and you cough into it, that's fine, but make sure you throw it away right away and then you wash your hands. So coughs and sneezes travel very far. So the best thing you can do is please 
practice good cough and sneeze hygiene and cover. Cover and um, hide, kind of, you know, get away. Like, so, so, and then, so person, coughing, sneezing, close personal tie, um, contact such as touching, shaking hands. I found this really interesting. They think that part of the reason why it spread so far in Iran is because they kiss. And then literally kissing up in the, if you're like a part of the royalty or part of the um, cabinet, you kiss more. Literally, you're kissing up to each other. So if you've probably heard in Iran, all these like government officials got coronavirus because they're probably doing a lot of kissing on each side. Okay, in France, they made it illegal to kiss. <laughs> like, I'm not joking because the French tend to, you know, it's part of their like welcome. You know, Americans shake hands, French kiss, Koreans bow. So probably bowing is a very good thing you can start practicing. <laughs> You know, you can start bowing to people, it's very good. Um, some places they're doing elbow bumps, you might have seen that, and like, yeah, they're doing elbow bumps. I've even saw somewhere like doing feet bumps or something. <laughs> you like, so anyway, hands are the dirtiest part of your body, okay? Do not touch people with your hands. All right, and then, like I said, touching an object and then touching something that ends up in your mouth, okay? And then fecal contamination, that's probably a low thing, but um, possible. So how severe is COVID-19? So 85% of who get it will have very mild to moderate cases. Most of them will not need to be hospitalized, or if they do, very short period of time and get home quickly. And all these, among these 85%, all of them get well, okay? So you got an 8.5 chance out of 10 that you're gonna be totally better. But 15% of people do get severe cases that require ICU, and these are the people who are most likely to die. If you're very sick, you get into the ICU, and then you're most likely to die. So the overall case fatality rate, and it's, um, it ranges very broadly, and you'll see a lot of controversy on this. Actually, in Korea right now, the case fatality rate's about 0.5, meaning, meaning five out of 1,000 people are dying in Korea. Okay, off of Japan, where they tested everybody, they have about 700 cases, Their, that mortality rate is also under 1%, about 0.8. Because we're realizing that more, many people are asymptomatic or have very mild symptoms, and they're not dying. Okay, so very few people are dying, less than 1%. However, you know, it also depends on your infrastructure. Okay, in Wuhan, when tens of thousands of people are coming in at one time, you know, the healthcare system is getting overwhelmed, okay? And the other thing we're gonna talk about, it has to, a lot to do with age and comorbidities. Okay, next slide. All right, this is just a quick slide I generated based on of some of the data that came out. So under 10, almost no death. If you're a 10 year old or yes, I think there's one child that may have died who had a lot of chronic health conditions and actually only 1% of all people with coronavirus are children. Children are spared from this disease. Now, they may be got a living in their noses because these children get everything, man. They, you know these kids, they're just snots all over the place. But they're probably used to it. They're the one kid that they're just constantly used to getting viruses. So they're not really affected and they're not dying. So for all the moms and dads out there, you might have a lot higher chance of dying than your child. Your child is not gonna die. So between, and then look at the next range, between 10 to 39 years of age, your chance of dying is 0.2%. 0.2%, that's two out of a thousand. If you're young, under 40, that's very low. But you may be a little bit older, 40 to 49. Your rate of de death is 0.4%. Okay, pretty low, four out of a thousand. But then it starts to go up a little bit if you're between 50 to 59, about one point something percent. And then as you get into the 60% in the almost 4%, 70 to 79, about 8%. And if you're 80 and above, 14%. So you can see who really dies from this disease are people who are older and people with what we call comorbidity. So if you have chronic heart disease, chronic lung disease, diabetes, those seem to be the three most common risk factors for death. And the way I would say is the more medications you are on, not vitamins I'm talking about, but you know who, I, who, who you are, if you're taking 20 medications every day because you have a bunch of medical problems, 
that's the person who's going to be most likely to die because their body's weak. And that's what happened in the nursing home in, um, uh, outside of Seattle, is that who ends up in a nursing home, right? People who cannot take care of themselves. They are the sickest of the sick. And that's why the mortality rate is very high in that kind of setting. But for the majority of people, we're talking about very low rates of death, okay? Now, the majority of uh, coronavirus thus far has been travel-related. Travel-related means it's being imported in. Okay, and you can't see the slide very well. This is directly from the uh, CDC website, but there are different areas that are graded. One, two, three. Three being do not travel unless it's ne absolutely necessary. Those three countries are China, Korea, and Iran, which are the top three, okay? Then they have a type t uh, class two, which is think countries like Japan, um, Italy, um, and then you have some like Hong Kong, a little bit lower. So, so, those, so a lot of places are now saying, unless you absolutely have to, do not travel to Korea, Iran, and China, and then most likely Italy as well. There's a lot coming out of Italy. I wouldn't be surprised if Italy makes it to class three, travel warning three as well. So what if you travel to one of those countries? Okay, what should you do? Well, the CDC is saying that if you travel to a level three country, you should probably self-quarantine for a couple weeks. Okay, now it is not universally true that everywhere in Korea has the same rate of infection. We know that 90% of the cases in Korea are coming out of one city, um, a little bit further in the south, where they're all associated with this one, um, the ma vast majority of it. And the rest of it in Korea is very low incidence. But that being said, the entire country has made this list. And so if you came from, if any of you traveled to any travel level three or two country, you monitor symptoms. And if you start having fever or any respiratory symptoms, then you need to call the public health department or your doctor. So you travel. Let's say you came back from Korea, OK? What should you look for? Like I said, fever or cough or shortness of breath, and you have a travel history, or you know somebody who has coronavirus. I don't mean like know somebody like I know my cousin in Korea has coronavirus. Not that kind of I know, but like, you know, pretty close, okay? And you develop those symptoms, you want to call public health, okay? Call, and then the other thing is, don't just show up to your doctor and say, I want to be tested for coronavirus. Do not do that. Absolutely not. Because if you have coronavirus, you have, could be, everyone in that waiting room is not part of the quarantine for 14 days. Please, don't do that to them. Don't do it. Call them first, and they will figure out a way to get you to the testing place, OK? Um, so do not show up at the doctor. And by the way, Rush has an e-visit. You can go online. And if they think that you need to be tested for coronavirus, it is a free visit, free. So if you don't have insurance, but you think you might be exposed to coronavirus, they will do a triage over the internet and then link you into the proper authorities and get you in for testing, OK? I can give you that contact information if you need it. So how do we prevent any respiratory infection? Everyone's freaking out about, about coronavirus, but they, actually there are 30 cases of influenza going around, and many more people have died of influenza this year. It's a really bad flu season. So this prevents anything. So first of all, wash your hands. And I'm sure you heard this somewhere. How long should you wash your hands? 20 seconds. I'm gonna, we're going to practice this because nobody washes their hands for 20 seconds. What the way you do it is you're gonna sing happy birthday two times. Everybody ready? We're gonna fake it. Ready? Go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear somebody. Happy birthday to you. Again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear someone. Happy birthday to you. Wow, how did that feel? That was 31 seconds. Okay, so maybe we sang it real slow. Okay. But it kind of gives you the sense of how long 20 seconds is. Almost nobody ever washes their hands. If you do, that you're a really special human being. Um, yeah, who does? 
Matt does, okay, he's UL, so he's like the only person probably ever who washes their hands. Or alcohol hand gel. This is why I love alcohol hand gel, because you don't have to do a 20 second hand rub. You put it on there and you get it coated like this, and then you can let it dry, okay? Much quicker, much quicker, and then you don't need water, you just need to carry it with you. So, um, uh, Dr. Sohn and Tony have one, just make sure it's at least 65%, um, you know, get a big bottle of it, carry it around. That's probably the nicest thing to do. Okay, same thing, cover your sneezes, blow your tissue, throw them away, avoid con close contact from someone who's sick. If you have a fever and cough, stay at home. Try not to touch your face, and this is a big one. Everyone's freaking out about coronavirus, but how many people here actually got their flu shot? Maybe half. So don't tell me you're scared of dying of coronavirus when you don't get the flu shot. Like seriously, 35 million people are getting the flu, but you didn't get your flu shot. And on top of that, because flu acts like coronavirus, the first thing we're gonna test you for is flu. And that's 99% more likely that you're gonna have flu than coronavirus. So if you can do something for yourself, is do get the flu shot. Because even if we create a coronavirus vaccine, None, the same people who raise their hand are going to get the coronavirus, and the rest of you aren't. So what's the big deal, right? You're freaking out, but you're not doing what you could do to protect yourself. Get the flu shot. All right, what about masks? There's a lot of controversy about masks. Um, so there's tons of myths on masks. The first thing is, a mask is if you're sick. Why? Because I told you, I am spewing, I have spewed so many particles right now, and poor Pastor Kevin has gotten quite a few of them, probably. Um, but if I were sick, my mask will kind of keep my particles from flying out at you, okay? So my mask protects you. In a healthcare setting, it's different when pro providers wear masks because we throw, and actually in, uh, in a highly infectious situation like this, we don't use regular masks, we use something called N95s that have a complete seal so that no particles are coming in along the sides. If you ever see surgical masks, they're basically like pretty holy, like, you know, lots of air. So if you're thinking like, came out at you, well, they're gonna come in all throughout the different ways, right? So the, um, so the surgical masks don't really protect you against me coughing because you all got exposed and all came in through all the sides. The N95 though is not comfortable to wear. And if you don't have a right fit, you're, you think, oh, I got a great N95. No, you didn't. Every single one of us in the hospital has to get specially fitted and tested for them because only if they have to fit you, they're multiple sizes. And if your face shape is weird, it doesn't work. And if you have a beard, it doesn't work. So, so it's actually, don't go, don't fall into the, you know, go on to Amazon and pay $200 for an N95. I know somebody's done that. Okay, don't do it, okay, because you don't know how to wear it. And the worst thing is, if you've ever worn a mask and try to wear it for more than an hour, it gets wet and sweaty and really irritating. So what do you do with your mask? You touch it. You like going, mm, uh, and what did I tell you the way you get coronavirus? You touched your face. So you took this mask that has all the germs on it, and then you basically rubbed it into your nose and mouth with your hands. Like, that's really bad. That's what you do when you wear a mask. But in the hospital, we're very different. We wear one mask, we throw it out, and we're exceptionally careful. We go through all this practice where we take the masks out like this so that you don't touch it, and we go like this, and then we drop it like this, like, and then we wash your hands like this. <laughs> you guys do not know how to take on or put on a mask because we realize the front of it's contaminated, and once we touch that front, then we are now contaminated. So it takes a lot of careful discipline, and that's why it gives people a false sense of, oh, look what I'm doing, I wore a mask, except I touched it 30 times on my face. And then on top of that, now it's wet, and it's gross, because I got everybody's germs, and I, then I try to wash it. Or I took a mask that was meant to be worn one time and I wore it for six hours, and then everybody's germs then got on it. No, nah, don't do it. Okay, so don't buy a mask, and I don't see many people here. Now, maybe a little bit different if your, your immune system is weak. There's some people we do recommend masks for, but for the ma vast majority of people in public, it doesn't really help you unless you practice good hygiene and discipline. So what's the future gonna hold? Only God knows, literally. Only God knows the future. 
But what we know that's going to come down the line is one, we know that if you become a high risk contact or you have been infected, you're going to be asked to be quarantined. And so I'm certain that during this, some of you here will be told, by the way, your coworker has been infected with coronavirus. So you're going to be quarantined for two weeks, even if you don't have any symptoms, you're fine but you're gonna be expected to stay at home for two weeks. Okay, that's gonna be likely. And if, you, even if, and if you become infected, even though you're mildly symptomatic, you're gonna be stuck at home for two weeks. So get ready, get some books, start, you know, good time to start reading the Bible, you know, many things. If community spread continues, what community spread meaning now it's going from more person to person, right now majority of cases are, like I said, are being imported, but more after it's not so much importation, but now I'm infected, and then now everybody here next to me was infected, could have been, you know, then they're gonna do something called social, social distancing. And social distancing means, and you've seen it a lot, is they start closing things down. They start closing schools, universities, churches, anywhere where there's more than multiple people getting together because we realize that when you bring a bunch of people together, there's a lot of room for spread, okay? So I wouldn't be surprised if more and more social distancing happens. I think what will happen is probably the school that has a CPS teacher, they're gonna close that school down. And so you can imagine uh, if more and more schools, they find cases, more and more schools will get shut down. And who knows, maybe in the next one month, they may say all CPS schools will be closed. Okay, so what's more irritating is not the fact I'd rather get coronavirus than have to stay home with my kids for a month, like really. Um, but that's actually the bigger concern is more of the social distancing and how that's going to affect your daily life. Not so much the coronavirus. So, that's what we need to be prepared for, is the social distancing that's going to come more and more. But the, that is, it should not cause panic. Because it closed down schools does not mean that everyone's gonna die. In fact, the reason why they do social distancing is to protect those who are most vulnerable. So we're doing it not so much for you who are healthy, but for the ones who are not. If you wanna think of it that way, okay? You will not die. This will not kill you. Next slide. All right. So how to prepare? Stay calm and pray. You will not die. Literally, this sickness will not end, death, end in death for the majority of people. But do prepare for lifestyle alteration, meaning quarantines, children at home, working from home, social distancing, decrease in ability to travel. Okay? Um, I recommend having some cleaning supplies at home, having some alcohol hand gels, having some good soap, if you don't have soap, soap and water is fine. By the way, never buy um, um, antibacterial soap. It's a waste of money and also it creates resistance, so don't ever buy it. Have minimum um, of medication, prescription medications, have, and then a supply of things like Tylenol, Dayquil, NyQuil, because most people who get coronavirus feel like they have the cold or flu. And then find a way to get food. If you get quarantined, if somebody you know gets quarantined, be mindful and like, you know what? We've just basically locked them up in their house for two weeks. Can you bring them some food? You know, so we need to, as a church, be thinking about as more and more people be quarantined, how can we support these people and their entire family? Because if Christ Christian gets quarantined with her kids, oh my goodness, someone's gonna have to bring her a lot of food to feed her family of six for the next two weeks. So that's a bigger issue, okay? No, I totally agree. So the one thing is, um, so the, this virus does rapidly spread. So overall, most people, it's not a severe illness. But if, if you are older or have a weaker immune system, your chance of dying is 14%, right? We talked about that. So for the elderly and for those with medical problems, this is a big thing. It will kill. So what we're doing is, again, we're doing it to protect the most vulnerable people in our population. Second of all, this virus, I, I, the way I think about it is, it's, um, there's some, a term called r naught, the amount of um, people one person will infect. So it seems like one person infects about two to three people. So it sounds very simple, oh, one person infects three. So you can do the math, and if you are good at um, geometric arithmetic, you go from one, three, and then you multiply three times 
0.39, and then you multiply it, actually by seven cycles, you're at 50,000. And the next one after that is 150,000. And the next one after that is 450,000. Do you see what I'm saying? It triples every five days. Okay, so you start with one, but when you triple it, within a few, within 45 days, you go from one case, 200 and something thousand cases. And so what we want to do is try to prevent that. And the reason why China has so many cases is because for 45 days, it went unchecked. But if you catch it early and then minimize the spread, then it dies. So what they're doing is almost every case is associated with a cluster. So almost 80%, it's not random people that get coronavirus. Almost when you trace back to it, 80% of patients, you can find all the patients. So if you, you know, shepherd, you know, somebody here got it, and we then said, okay, you got it, and then we'll trace all of your contacts, and we can trace 80, most of them, and quarantine them, that's going to be contained. So that's what the public health is trying to do, is contain it. But it will keep spreading though. There is no vaccine yet. It's too new. It's going to take a year and a half. Skin, I'm not so sure. Um, surfaces, they don't know for sure either. It's anywhere from a few hours to a few days. And it seems like different surfaces have different lengths of time. So soft, fuzzy surfaces like that chair, probably less likely, maybe a couple of hours. But hard surfaces, metal surfaces may last longer. So if you were going to clean places, we want to really clean for high touch metal surfaces. High touch surfaces are things like doorknobs, um, light switches, bathroom, um, you know what I'm saying, water things, faucets, toilet seats, bus, yeah, those are high touch, okay? And those high touch surfaces, because they're also metal, they may live on it longer. But the good thing about this virus is very easily killed. You don't need to get Clorox bleach, in, um, like crazy Clorox bleach, and bleach your entire house. It's unnecessary. Actually, regular soap and water will kill will destroy the surface of the virus. So it is not a very hardy virus. So just doing simple things, like if anyone has some, one of those like big things, the Clorox wipes that they have, just wiping down high touch surfaces will um, be adequate. But they do, we don't know for sure, but anyway from up to a week, yeah. Up to, up to a week, two weeks. So most people, um, so it depends on your immune system. So. What we're finding is that a lot of people can clear, again, within you know, two weeks after they've um, gotten infected. But some people are longer. If your immune system is weak, you may be shed longer. They actually have found that <laughs> children, while very unlikely to get symptomatic, tend to shed for a long time. They found a baby who shed for a full month. Shed, meaning that they kept, like, you could keep culturing it. Keep, could keep spreading, yeah. So, so, but, um, but we think that up to two weeks. But there's, an, that's a changing thing. We are learning more and more about it because some of the testing that they're doing, you might have heard of this, is like person was negative, now they're positive. Oh my gosh, should they get reinfected? Actually, part of it is that there is very sensitive testing that could be intermittently shedding, and then also just because you have it in your throat by PCR doesn't mean actually it's alive. So there's a lot of stuff that we don't fully understand yet. Um, but probably two weeks is um, probably adequate, yeah. No, it doesn't spread in water. So it's really hand, mouth, nose. Definitely the um, high touch area. So guess what's most high touch in the airplane? Your food table. Do you think the airplane stewardesses clean the food table after each shift? No, okay. So that's probably the first thing you wanna do is to get, the chlor get some, bring some Clorox wipes, is wipe down all your high touch surfaces around you and near you, okay? Um, my husband knows these answers because we watch it on CNN. So, and then the other thing is, don't stick your hand in the front. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where they have like the magazine? Because that's where you go, <coughs> and you threw up and you like stick your hand in. They do have actually rapid um, air exchange. I think they said they exchange the air every minute or something like that. So the, so it, it's the air is circulating very quickly and sucked out. Do, if you do have someone who's coughing near you, you can ask if they can move you or move that person to an area. Sometimes it may be worth you know, bringing a um, mask if you think, but again, I wouldn't bring one, I would bring multiple, so that when you notice that it's wet or it's uncomfortable or you're touching it, to change it, but you have to do really good, um, again, discipline. 
The mask is not the magic answer. You have to be really disciplined. But as long as there's nobody really coughing around you, again, that six feet um, space, you should be okay. And then clean your, just um, your kind of your personal space that you're going to touch. If you, unless you know somebody near, that you has, has had coronavirus or you've traveled to a high endemic area, your risk for coronavirus is incredibly low. So if you're not in the high risk group, just practice good personal hygiene. Okay. Yeah. Th so those are very. So they don't think that you're getting a lot of coronavirus from food, but just wash it. Just wash your fresh fruits and vegetables like you would anywhere. Yeah. Water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Water's fine. Yeah. Recover. So there is no drug. There is no garlic. There is no vitamin C. There is no probiotic. There is nothing that will speed up. So no. If whatever you read on the internet. It's not true. But what is probably the best is red. Same thing like for a cold. Don't take antibiotics either unless you have an infection, bacterial infection. So rest, actually staying calm. So actually when we get stressed is when our bodies are most vulnerable to sickness. So actually getting anxious and really stressed puts you at a much higher risk of getting sick. So the best thing to do is literally stay calm, pray, and rest. If you want to get sick, be anxious, freak out. Then your body is very, very sensitive to getting sick, okay? Not unless you, it, it's fine, but if you take your gloves and touch your face, then it's just an extension of your hands. So remember, anything, the top three things that get coronavirus is what? Eyes, nose, and mouth. Eyes, nose, mouth. And the mo unless someone directly coughs into you or sneezes into you, the way you're going to get it is by you getting touching and then putting it on yourself. Okay, so practice. Don't touch your face, but it's a very difficult practice. If you counted, you probably saw that I've touched my glasses multiple times today already. Pretty much right now. Yeah, if you're sick enough to need supportive care in the hospital, we have full ventilators, respiratory respirators. We are testing out some different investigational um, uh, treatments in the hospital. There is an NIH-funded study for a um, new novel drug that was developed for Ebola virus. There are some other meds that are being tested, but right now none of them um, um, are proven. But if you are sick enough to use it, we will, we will use them and we have them in the hospital.